Hello there! This is Real World Audio and it's... Uh, I would say this is the concluding video to pre-amplifier week but don't be surprised if I will add additional ones after this on pre-amplifiers as a continuation. And this crowning uh, episode is about the gain, the gain structure of your system. And, uh, and, and it's also a very vital advice on how to choose a preamplifier if uh, a passive preamp is enough for you or you need an active preamplifier. Because uh, in, on my channel I have lots of episodes, I think about a year ago, about uh, transformer-based volume controls and autoformer-based volume controls, which are AVC and TVC. Uh, if you do a search on my channel for these letters, you will find these videos. But uh, if you read and you, and then you, wow, I want a TVC in my system, and you cannot just slap one in and expect that it will miraculously uh, do everything for you, because first you have to examine whether you have enough gain from your source to drive your power amp. Because the passive preamplifiers, these passive volume controls, they do not make the source louder. So if whatever is coming out from your source, whether it's a CD player or your whatever uh, DAC streaming or whatnot, or are you listening to uh, phono stage, phono stage output, whatever is coming out there, that's the peak. You cannot go louder than that. So the volume control on the TVC, when you set it to max, it won't boost the signal. It will just give you purely the 100% what it is getting from your source. And if your 100% what you are getting is not enough to get 100% response from the amplifier, then you will need an active preamplifier. So then it means you need a vacuum tube right here, <laughs> in, and not just the tube, but the preamp around it. <laughs> so, so you need all of that to boost the levels. So when you have tubes in a preamplifier, that's what they're doing. They're boosting the level. They are making the input signal higher than what's coming from your output unit. And when you slap the volume control on them, either it's a passive attenuator or whatnot, then what that, that doing is breaking, it's cutting out a lot of this signal so that uh, uh, the tubes always have that constant amplification. So if you have like a 12AX7 tube in a preamp, that's always making the music, the signal go 100 times bigger. So, for example, if there's a 10 millivolt signal coming from your deck, then it will make it a 1 volt big signal. So, 100 times voltage gain, 10,000 times power gain, basically. So, that, that's just super giant, massive. And when you are turning down the volume control, it's still doing that 100 times magnification job, but you are breaking the input down so that one, whatever is coming from your CD, it's not 10 milli millivolts anymore, but maybe it's 1 millivolt, 10 microvolts, da, 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 even lower, lower. But this thing will always give its maximum gain. And um, if it happens so that you need more gain, then you need these dudes who do active work to make it bigger than it was. And and you would say that uh, I have a DAC in, and it puts out 2 volts and I have a, a, a power amplifier and its input sensitivity is 2 volt. Now they will be perfectly matched because the max coming out from the DAC is the same as the amp can handle. And you are right and you are wrong as well because the material that's coming from your DAC, the music that we are listening to, the peak of every song is not peaking at two, two volts. Uh, just think about the early CD recordings. The levels there are super low and maybe they don't even go to a half volt. 
peak output. So if you are playing like CDs from the 80s and you don't have the ability on your deck to adjust the volume, in that case you will need an active preamplifier to crank the volume higher. Because if you have a DAC with a 2 volt output and a power amp with 2 volt input, and you have the ability to digitally uh, uh, increase the volume, then it will work perfectly because you can increase the output of the DAC up to 2 volts, which is the max that your power amp can handle. So now uh, the gain structure is perfectly matched. However, let's say you have a CD player with a DAC directly and the DAC doesn't have volume control ability. You put on like a Vangelis CD from the 80s and uh, like Albedo 0.39 and I don't, I'm not hearing anything. Now you would need an active preamp between the two because the output voltage for most of the songs is like 0.1 volts or something like that. Not even that. And uh, you need just serious boosting for that. Uh, also, for example, uh, uh, you would say that, okay, most of my CDs I listen to, they have enough volume for them. But you also use maybe Netflix or streaming videos. And then you notice that the streamed videos, they have just the fraction of the output than what you are getting from the CD. So that's what I noticed. Uh, for example, the gain structure of my system with the single-ended power amp is such that uh, I was running it just directly from the CD player, directly from my phono stage, and I just left the volume on my uh, auto-former volume control always on max. I max it out, and it mm, gave me perfect volume. Uh, and it, it was just sonic bliss. However, if I wanted to switch it to Netflix, uh, it, it, I, I could barely hear most of the things because the output level is so low. And that, that's when uh, you need an active preamp to do that, when you, you have these types of troubles. So I hope this answers the, the question whether you need an active preamp or not. And, and how important it is to, to match the gain structure of your source to your, uh, to your power amp. And, and that's talking about what is uh, the input uh, requirement, the gain requirement of power amps. The, the, it can, they can vary a lot. The, the standard is 2 volts uh, input, but, but the, the, the variations can be tremendous. If you look at uh, the older amplifiers, like, like the Golden Era tube amplifiers, some of them have like 0 0.2 volts output, in, I mean, input sensitivity. They, they are super sensitive, like, like at, at 0 0.2 volt, they already put out peak power. That's what the input sensitivity means. How much input that unit requires for full power output. And, and the full power is like, if it's a 200 watt amplifier, it puts out 200 watts from that 2 volt input. If it's a 1 watt amplifier, it puts out <laughs> 1 watts for that 2 watt. But, but that's the thing for you, that for full input you need that much voltage to drive that power amplifier. And when you look at, there are some other amplifiers which require like 6 or 8 volts to, to put out the full output, or maybe even 10 volts. And if you look at the difference, like 0 0.2 volts versus 10 volts, that's a gigantic difference. That There's like a 50 times difference between the two. And what is 50 times in voltage? In, in dB, that's a tremendously high figure. And, and if you just want to slap in a, a, an active preamplifier and then just turn the volume down, up or down, then you will end up like half a volume, half a knob difference between the two sensitivities of these amps. So uh, that's it. I, I, I could talk much more about this, but would bore you guys probably to death. So, have an awesome day. I hope 
I just made clear how important the gain structure matching is and when you need the preamp or not. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye bye.